Great. So we've talked a lot about the spinal cord, its segments, its topography, its function, and now we're going to look inside. We're going to go in and look at the anatomy of, of a cross-section, of a, of a quintessential cross-section within the spinal cord. And, and here is a, is a picture of one. Uh, this happens to be in the lumbar cord. We'll, we'll talk about how I, how I can tell that in a minute. Um, and what you see is this, this is dorsal, this is ventral, and what you see is that there's a butterfly. There's a butterfly of what, in fact, is what we would call gray matter. Gray matter is where cells are, neurons are, and then white matter is where axons are. So the, the basic organization of the spinal cord is a butterfly of gray matter within uh, a, a, a uh, surrounded by white matter. Why is this white matter blue? Because the stain is for myelin. So in this, and you can you can also see um, a con the most common stains will stain for uh, myelin, either blue or black, depending on on the type. Um, and what you're seeing is, is is the myelin. So the white matter is blue or bl or dark and the gray matter is lighter. You can also see some neurons. These humongous neurons that you're actually seeing are, are motor neurons. They're huge. They're, they're visible um, at a pretty low magnification. And here, out here, are roots cut in the cross-section. OK, so this is um, what we know so far is that there's a dorsal root that is sensory and a ventral root that is motor. And indeed, that belies the basic organization of the spinal cord gray matter, such that the dorsal part of the gray matter is sensory and the ventral part is motor. We're going to go over to the board and see how that develops and look a little bit more into that. First of all, how does it develop? In the Remember that we have this tube with a central lumen that will become the central canal, which will then get clogged up in the human. But in the embryo, this is an open lumen. And this is the spinal cord uh, primordium. And, and, and what you have is a, uh, an actual inflection point within the lumen that is called the sulcus limitans. And everything dorsal to that is part of the alar plate and is going to become sensory in function. Everything ventral to that is part of the basal plate and will, will have a motor uh, function. And in the basal plate, there is a further delineation between uh, a more ventral group, which serves skeletal motor or voluntary motor function, and a more dorsal group that serves autonomic motor function. OK, so that's the embryo. And then we get a, uh, an adult. And this is, a, this is sort of a, um, a mock-up of, of several features of the spinal cord, none of, all of which do not exist in any single uh, section. But for illustrative purposes, this will uh, serve us well. So the root is going to come in. The dorsal root is going to come in here. And what in the gray matter is, is divided up into just a few places. The fir, the, this outer portion of the dorsal horn is called the superficial dorsal horn. And this part of the um, spinal cord is very is critical to pain and temperature processing. It is here that the spinal thalamic tract uh, information comes in synapses. And actually, let's go to a different color. Apologies to the colorblind people in this audience. So here is um, sp the spinal thalamic tract pathway. It's going to come in synapse on a, on a neuron here in the superficial dorsal horn, which is going to send its axon across uh, ventral to the central canal, clogged up central canal. And this axon is going to then shoot forward right here in what's called the ventral lateral, um, in the ventral lateral quadrant. OK. So this is critical for pain and temperature. 
Okay, so the dorsal column medial lumniscus pathway, this is light touch vibration proprioception information. It's gonna come in and it's gonna go up these dorsal columns. That's uh, the dorsal columns um, are gonna carry this information all the way up to here, all the way up to the, to the back, uh, uh, to the caudal medulla. The next, P, the next area of the um, spinal cord that we want to think about is this area here, which we'll call the intermediate gray. And the intermediate gray is where we have um, the um, preganglionic neurons that are going to go out and innervate sympathetic targets or sympathetic ganglia. And so um, in the thoracic cord, these form a little outpouching, this thing right here, and that is called the intermediolateral cell column, the IML, the intermediolateral cell column. Um, in the sacral cord, it's gonna form a, 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 it's gonna be roughly here, but it's gonna look slightly different. We'll look at that in a bit. And finally, down here is where there are, are motor neurons, and so, Motor neurons, uh, they exist in pools that, that are around like this. And there's one thing that I want you to remember about this, which is that the motor neuron pools that innervate distal musculature, what is distal musculature? That's distal musculature. This, the, the shoulder is a proximal, proximal musculature. Trunk is very proximal, axial. So axial, proximal, and progressively more distal musculature. And the axial musculature is gonna be innervated by the most uh, medially located motor neurons and the progressively more distal musculature uh, will be innervated uh, by uh, motor neurons that are progressively located more laterally. What does that mean? It means that if you're in the thoracic cord, let's just, let's just think about what the, this horn, this ventral horn is gonna look like. In the thoracic cord, there is no appendicular muscul musculature. There's no distal musculature, it's all axial. So what do we get? We get this skinny little um, ventral horn. Now, if we go, off to um, uh, the, either the cervical or the lumbosacral, what you see, now you, have a, a, now you have a limb. Now you have a limb, so you have a hand or, or a foot, and that is gonna be innervated by a group of motor neurons that's gonna be out here, out in the lateral ventral horn. So we're gonna have this lateral extension of the ventral horn in either cervical or lumbosacral levels. Okay, we're gonna use this information now in the next video to, to orient ourselves to the various things that, um, the various landmarks that we can use to identify uh, the, um, the, 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 the segment at which any one spinal cord section comes from.